So John Halsey moves on to two wins. Roger Misa has had a win that second time out. We look through the lineup of race 27 and we see a chance to see in action again Mike Baxter who had a win first time out. That's outfit number 88. But also on the line, number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. You may remember they were leading comfortably in their first ride and spun it on this top bend, managed to get across the line for fourth, but of course that doesn't give them a very good scoring position. They need points from this ride. We understand that there's no Shane Baker, his place being taken by one, two, three, Dave Penfold. Shane unfortunately blowing a bottom end this morning. No John Mitten also, I can remember John come up and telling me that he's also blown a piston. So we watch to see the battle between Ken Lane and Mike Baxter perhaps. As Ken Lane makes the best of the starts, he wheeled it off that start line, but indeed he gets himself comfortably into first place. And Mike Baxter is the rider that's got to go after him. Goes for a tight line, Mike Baxter, he really has got a brilliant tight line on this top corner. Well, watch what happens again on this pit corner. This is where he was getting tight in his early rides as well. Ken Lane tries to shut the door, but Mike Baxter goes through on the inside. A brilliant ride from Mike Baxter. He really has got this track sus. As you watch Ken Lane and Mark Edwards go quicker down the straight, it's the corners that really are the advantage for Mike Baxter. He seems to be able to hug a much, much tighter line than anybody else here this afternoon. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards though have still got the lead. Watch what happens on this pit corner because again Mike Baxter drives it in hard. Ken Lane very cautiously holds a tight line though. That was very intelligent driving from our British Masters champion. There's nothing less than we would have expected. Holds a very tight line to make sure that, that door is shut for Mike Baxter to come through. Forces Mike Baxter wide on that bottom corner as well. Well he's telling him if you're going to come through you've got to do it the hard way. Number eight, Rob Heath and Dean Bartholomew are in third place and not really losing contention with those front two. That really is a good ride from uh, Rob Heath. He's going very, very quickly indeed out there. As you see Ken Lane and Mark Edwards doing exactly what they needed to. They needed maximum points from this ride. They come across the line with a checkered flag in front of them and take maximum points. That's not done Mike Baxter's any uh, result, any harm at all finishing in second though. He's scoring good points this afternoon. 27 then, a good win for our British Masters champions. That of course is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Number seven, the number of their machine. That goes in first place. In second place, number 88, Mike Baxter and passenger Steve Bassett. In third place, number eight, Rob Heath and Dean Bartholomew. In fourth place, number 773, and Glenn Richmond and Steve North. No other finishes, the winning time 132.30, the speed 50.52. 788-8773, the winning time 132.30. race 28 and we look for two more of our winners from first time out we've got Rob Wilson this time out and Mick Cave they were both winners from that first outing and indeed it is Rob Wilson against the front to go into that first bend remember a change of passenger for Rob Wilson this afternoon it's Andy Orchard not Vince Jones and it's Mick Cave that's got up in the second place so these two both scoring well this afternoon they had wins first time out so uh, Looking to equal John Horsley, Robbie Wilson stays at the front. Mick Cave though, getting close to him. Mick Cave also had a win first time out, so he'll be looking to score well in this one. Drives hard off that bottom bend, but Rob Wilson, I mentioned earlier on, did win the Man of Kent event down here last year. He does like to ride this circuit. He looked very comfortable last year whenever he rode here. He equally looks comfortable this afternoon. There's always certain circuits that cer suit certain riders. This needs to be one for Robbie Wilson. Mick Cave and Mick Cave in second place at the moment. Those two open up quite a gap between them and third place. Outfit number three, Colin Hunt. The battle going on for fourth place between the lower orders, but all eyes really on that front runner because these two have scored exceptionally well so far. They make it to the line, it will be Rob Wilson and Andy Orchard. Second win of the afternoon. 
Nick Cave and Passenger mixed ace finishing second place. Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby finish a comfortable third. A very, very good ride from Rob Wilson. Race 28 then a win for outfit number 24. That's Rob Wilson and Andy Orchard. Second place going to Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Third place goes to outfit number three, Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby. Fourth place, number 112. Fifth place, number 77. Sixth place, number 25. The winning time, 131.08, 51.06. 24, 5, 3, 112, 77 and 25. 51.06, 131.08, the time. Well, as we now turn our attention to the third leg rides, we go into the 250 competition. There is only one rider that's on a maximum in the 250s. That, of course, is Neil Street. No, it's not. It's Lee Street. <laughs> And another street that is out there as well is number 741. Well, he's scored well in his second ride, but had a disastrous ride first time out. And of course is Mel Street. And while we're talking about riders that have scored well in one ride but not in another, you watch to see that number 139 Dave Mears is up there as well. Matthew Smith is still Matthew Street is still setting the pace at the moment as he comes around off that pit bend. Dave Mears has come around the outside though and Darren Bishop has gone up the inside. So Darren Bishop number 89, he's on 14 points at the moment. Should be in a position to qualify for the final pick Matthew Street now to go down that back Dave Mears number one three nine. First by Dave Mears. He's had a win second time out. He's now coming through into his last lap, leading this field. Darren Bishop still there in second. Matthew Street still there in third place at the moment. Third place is James. Certainly pressure for that third place. Watching going to the pit lane for the last time in race 29. Number 139 as he takes the checkered flag. Darren Bishop has got through to second. It's close for third, but that looked like Matthew Street has just hung on to it. to catch up in a few minutes because I have scribbled down the result of uh, race 30 but we're already underway with the left hand side cars going into their third leg we've only got one rider on a maximum in this competition as well scoring I think we ought to call it some riders not scoring at all well in their first ride and then going out and winning in their second while I'm talking of that sort of rider the leader of this one is number 808 that of course is Luke Patchell and uh, Julian Browning they had a win second time out so they are sitting on seven points and looking for well in second place at the moment he's out for that of course is Tom Penfold and Jason Glenny. They sit on nine points from two rides. So not exactly in winning form this afternoon, but scoring consistently well. Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis, number 68, are another rider that's sitting on seven points. They still But doing his campaign no harm at all. Luke Patchell and Julian Brown. One more lap to go for them as we see number 24, Tom Penfold and Jason Glenny not able to close the gap. Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis still holding the third. Luke Patrick in race 31. That's certainly done Luke Patrick's no the maximum from race 31.
Followed home in second by outfit number 24. That, of course, is Tom Penn, Foley, Jason Glennie. 68 is Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis. 174 is a Duncan Fish. Last leg of the 250, it was a win for number 75, Lee Street. A second place for number 76, John Dormer. Third place for number 300, Terry Giles. Fourth place for number 124, Keith Strudwick. Fifth place for number 18. Sixth place for number 32. Seventh place, 71. Eighth place, 321. Ninth place, 181. Tenth place, 30. Eleventh place, 54. And twelfth place, number 5. The winning time, 140.44. That, of course, was the result of race 30. And you can see that we've lost an outfit on the start line. Marshall's deciding that a red flag was needed in the interest of safety. Of course, the outfits do drift very wide on that pit bend at the moment, but it does look as if they've got the uh, riders back in line for the start of this race. And indeed, it looks as if we are underway. Of course, a chance to see this time Bill Penfold in action. It is indeed Bill that's made the best of the starts as he comes past us for the first time. So very unfortunate there for Lenny Borer, he of course had that tumble first time out. The lead with Bill Penfold. As indeed Bill Penfold comes round off that pit bend, leading very comfortably. He of course leads the competition overall. He's not been beaten yet this afternoon. Indeed, as Bill Penfold starts to catch up with uh, Lenny Bora, and well, Lenny being waved off the circuit, but Bill Penfold wondering, I'm sure, what's happening because he did have an outfit in front of him for a moment. John Arnott is the outfit that's got to try and pursue Bill Penfold, though. And he's got to go uh, very, very well to actually catch up on the and at Nigel Shaw looking in tremendous form this afternoon. Remember they've had two wins already this afternoon so this could be a maximum for them as they go into their last lap. Oh, the position has changed for second place. Phil Davis and Richard Davis have got themselves in a second in front of John Arnott in third now. As we see the checkered flag being made ready. Look to see whether Bill Penfold can do it in the left-hand chairs. Indeed, as they cross the line, Bill Penfold and passenger Nigel Shaw finish in first place. In second place, Phil Davis and Richard Davis. Third place, John Arnott and Russell Steele. So again, I hope that has indeed uh, got you up to date with all the results. I know a lot of you do keep the points. We'll look to the 350s because we're already underway with this very interesting 350 competition. Steve Carter is the man that's made the break. So I was quickly trying to look to see whether we have any of our points. He's got 16 points overall, equal with Martin Jacobs and Keith Potts. So he'll be looking to score well. Martin Jacobs is in second place. Alan Harmer has scored well this afternoon. He's on 10 points, up in fourth place. But a good scrap this for the lead now with Martin Jacobs. Oh, a good scrap this in the 350s as we've seen all afternoon in this class. Mark Seabright still holding third. He can see the battle that's going on in front of him as Martin Jacobs desperately trying to make it. Martin Jacobs is the rider in third. It's just anxious. He wants to see what happens in front of him. Trying to hold a tight line in case they push each other wide. Oh, he'll be watching for that tactical move because if Martin Jacobs persuades Steve Carter to go right, quite often the second place rider is going to be a good point. He could see a rider go to the first place. He drags 
Steve Carter wide with him, those two come together, can Steve Wright make anything of this, he does indeed get through the second. All right, so the line there, that was a good result for Martin Jacobs, he fought very, very hard for it, but I think on the line it was indeed uh, Mark Seawright that got through in the second place. Well, indeed, we uh, thought the 350 competition was going to be a tough one this afternoon, it's turning out to be exactly that, we look forward to that big final at the end of the day. Three then, the third leg of the 350 competition and a very good win for number 14, that's Martin Jacobs, that's done his point scoring no harm at all, he'd definitely be out in the final by my arithmetic. In second place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In third place, number 75, Steve Carter. Fourth place, number 121, Alan Harmon. Palmer, I should say. Now, fifth place, number 332. Sixth place, number 9. Seventh place, 260. Eighth place, 36. Ninth place, 77. Tenth place, 45. 141.34 the time. The speed, 50.53. 14, 167, 75, 121, 332, 9, 260, 36, 77, 45, 50.53, a 141.34. Well, we move into the last of the qualifying rides for the 350s. It certainly has turned out to be a very interesting competition. Oh, we've got some very quick riders here. Remember the man who's on form at the moment is Wayne Broadhurst. He's ridden brilliantly well this afternoon. It's Wayne Broadhurst that leads going into that first bend. Right on the back wheel of Wayne Broadhurst. This promises to be a very good scrap between these two. Keith Potts, of course, on the Godden machinery. Going very, very well, and he gets close to the back wheel of Wayne Broadhurst once again. Those two indeed a long way away from JC as he's first place. to get enough points in second place to get him into that final. Keith Potts, of course, is a very determined rider, so I'm sure he's going to go for the win. Well, I was looking at Dave Mears in third place. It's David Steen that's in fourth, that's moving through into third, perhaps, as we go to that one. So we've got a good start. Wayne Broadhurst looking all around. It's a wonder where Keith Potts is. He's looking inside, he looked outside, and what he didn't know is that Keith Potts is right on the back wheel. Again, you can see that Wayne Broadhurst looks over his shoulder. First he looks on the inside, then he looks on the outside. But you can see exactly where Keith Potts is. He's right behind his back wheel. Again, Broder slips down, he knows he might have to be inside. Well, an interesting track in the favour of David Steen, but he's one two, it's not going to be sorted until it gets to the line, just keep on going for it on the inside. Great ride from Wayne Broadhurst, a brilliant effort from Keith Potts, as he saved a little bit from the final. A win for number 158 and what a hard fought ride that was for Wayne Broadhurst. In second place number 175, that of course is Keith Potts. In third place number 41, David Steen. Fourth place number 139, Dave Mears. In fifth place number 96, sixth place 26. Seventh place 261, eighth place 69. No other finishes. The winning time 139.43. 51.32 the speed. 158, 175, 41, 139, 96, 26, 261, 69, 139.43 the time. The winning speed, 51.32. Well, that's the 350s. They now will be doing all their calculations, trying to find whether they've made it into the final. Have they done enough? We look to the 500cc sidecars as we go into the third leg. Well, top of the point scoring of this is Alvin number 30. Right up there in the point is number 20, number 91, and we do see number 91 going this one. Number 7, Kevin Laird has got a lot of work to do. He's a little bit down the point scoring at the moment. But Wayne Boys is the leader at the moment from in second place, number 13, Keith Baird and Brian Groves. Well, Keith Baird and Brian Groves have got well in second place as I say that you can see that Kevin Laird has gone through his problems for Keith Baird 
No problems whatsoever for Wayne Boys as he gets away from the rest of the field. Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse holding second and I'm will actually be enough for them. Questionable on the results of the next two races, whether they will actually make that final or not. I feel sure that Wayne Boys will make that final as he goes into his last lap. Wayne Boys and Simon King have ridden consistently well all afternoon. Uh, he keeps looking down the engine. He continually looks down at that engine as he tries to turn the power off coming out of there. As they come to the line, it's going to be a win for Wayne Boys and Simon King. I think that's just about enough to guarantee them a place in the final. Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse get second, and in third place, number 25, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Race 35, a win for number 91, that's Wayne Boys and Simon King. In second place, number 7, that's Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse. In third place, number 25, our only other finisher, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. The winning time, 143.51, the speed 49.42. 91, 7 and 25, well that one's easy enough isn't it? So we put maximum points through for number 91. I think that's just about enough for uh, Wayne Boys to get into the final. Well, we watch to see what happens in race 36 because now we have got Mel and Lester Goodwin. They are unbeaten so far this afternoon. Alan and Lynn Peck scored well, are on second in the point score, and it is Alan and Lynn Peck that get away from the start line. Oh, a brilliant start from Alan Peck as he goes into that top corner, driving in hard, trying to make it all. Now finds a way through, gets to the front once again. A very, very talented rider, Mel Goodwin. Oh, he and Lester get to the front and stay there, as you can see, Alan and Lynn Peck come to be now in the second place. Simon Baird up into third. in second place, I think that should just about keep them in the final. Mel and Lester Goodwin will most certainly be in that final, they're unbeaten so far this afternoon, so if they stay as they are, they will uh, be sure of a place in that final. Simon Baird it is that's trying to close that gap on them as we see the last lap flag go out for Mel and Lester Goodwin. Just one more lap to complete. Alan and Impact look fairly comfortable now, don't they? They've started to open that gap up a little bit now, so uh, they will be qualifying races. We watch the checker flag being made ready for Mel and Lester Goodwin. That's the final place for them. Coming home in second is number 20, Alan and Lynn Peck. In third place, number 14, Simon Baird. Number 30, that's Mel and Lester Goodwin. In second place, number 20, Alan and Lynn Peck. In third place, number 14, Simon Baird and uh, R. Sanford. In fourth place, number 21, Norman Haynes and Neil Pocknell. Speed, 49.88. The winning time, 142.90. 142.90. 30, 20, 14 and 21. 49.88 the speed, 142.90 the time. We move in to race 37. We're with the last ride of the 500cc solo. And to uh, quickly run through the top scorers so far, Paul Hurry, the only rider on a maximum. We've got Trevor Banks and Neville Tatum just behind him on 16 points. Paul Mitchell's on 14 points. Ricky Stanford and Duncan Tolerest on 13. 
Mark C. Wright on 12 points. That's how they sit at the moment. But what a clash we've got in this one. It's Trevor Banks and Paul Harry leave the start line together. Trevor Banks in all sorts of problems, as indeed is Paul Harry. So both of them together on that top corner. All sorts of problems. Both of them went into that top corner very, very hard indeed. And obviously, as you can see, the red flag's already in the air. In the interest of safety, we've got elk machines and riders on the circuit. <laughs> oh, indeed, I think all of you saw there was a number of stars ready for the restart. I think nearly everybody that was involved is actually on the line. I can see Chris Tritton on the line. I can see Trevor Banks. Paul Hurry has had to borrow machinery, but he indeed is on the start line. Paul Mitchell is there as well. Number 16, Steve Bicknon, who was involved, he's on the line. So we look to have got a full restart as they get underway. It's a very quick start once again. Well, Paul Hurry on uh, different machinery as Paul Mitchell has got away. Trevor Banks leads her going into that first corner. Oh, Trevor Banks goes round that first bend this time. Second place is catching rapidly as they go into that pit bend. Oh, Trevor Banks has certainly got the lead. I think that's Paul Hurry going very, very wide. Paul Mitchell on the inside. Well, it's Neville Tatum that's up on the inside and on the back wheel of Trevor Banks. Paul Hurry tries to get around the outside of Paul Mitchell. Let's get him to the first place. Neville Tatum, coming into the place of Mike Trevor, of course, is riding at number 23. He holds second place and has looked very, very quick this afternoon. Trevor Banks leads. Neville Tatum in second, Paul Hurry in third. Oh, great to see all of these going so well after that stumble they had. And then we look on that far side to see we've lost Steve Bickler on the top corner, but let's stay with Trevor Banks because he really is in a strong position. He was on 16 points coming into this last ride, so we're going to be sure of seeing him and Neville Tatum. He's holding third at the moment as he comes round that pit bend and Tatum gets close to Trevor Banks, but Trevor Banks takes it. Never take him in second. Oh, he in third. Chris Tritton in fourth place and Paul Mitchell finishing in fifth. Race 37 then, and after that restart, we get a result of a win for number four, Trevor Banks. In second place, number 23, Neville Tatum. Third place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Fourth place, number three, Chris Tritton. Fifth place, 29. Sixth place, 121. Seventh place, number two, no other finishes, 136.85 the time. <laughs> This time we get a clean start and it looks like Adrian Moore is the one who's made the best of the starts. He goes into the lead going into that first corner. Well, lucky for Duncan Torres. made the best of it so far. Mark C. Wright can now see coming through on the inside. The very tall figure of C. Wright right on the inside there. That's number 167. Now well, it is indeed number 26, Robbie Fuller. That's got the best of the starts. And Robbie really in action. I thought he was going to be a little bit of 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 a
certainly looks to be in action this afternoon now that he's just uh, uh, put himself through into a position in the final of the boys this time. I mentioned that uh, Duncan Tolhurst and Mark Four, Duncan Tolhurst. Third place, number 167, Mark C. Wright. Fourth place, number 45. Fifth place, number 165. Sixth place, number 174. Seventh place, 04. Eighth place, 145. Ninth place, 19. Tenth place, 201. The winning time, 137.50. The speed, 52.33. The last then of the solo qualifying rides. We see them all again in those big finals after the interval. It's 26.74, 167, 45, 165, 174, 04, 145, 19, and 201. 137.50 the time, 52.33 the speed. Well, I say the last of the qualifying rides in the solo field. We move now into the last of the qualifying rides in the big 1,000cc right-hand sidecar class. And as we look down here, we've got uh, in the top point scoring at the moment, Rob Wilson, John Halsey, Mick Kay, Roger Misa, Mike Baxter, Neville Penfold and Ken Lane, they're all up there at the moment, but they all know they've got to perform again in this last ride as we look to the first of the third leg. It is indeed Roger Misa and Shane Lappell that have made the best of the start, but out there with them is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. They'll be going hard after them, they know they need to score well in this one. Mick Cave and Mick Stace are up there in third, but a great race in prospect between these front two. Roger Misa and Shane Lappell have got away Ken Lane and Mark Edwards go after them. Mick Cave still there in third place. And it looks very, very quick to me out there this afternoon. Roger Misa now starting to find the best way around this circuit. Oh, it's always difficult when riders come to a track for the very first time. You wonder whether they have actually picked the right gearing, the right tyres or whatever. And I know you might have uh, remembered back to the first ride that Roger Misa had this afternoon. It looked disappointing, but he certainly has got everything sorted now. As he looks very much in control as he comes around that bottom corner. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards still going after them. But not closing that gap at all, as indeed is Mick Cave and Mick Stace in third. Fourth place crew is Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby, but they really are a long way off those leaders who really are turning the power on now as they go around that top corner for the last time in their qualifying rides, and I would have said that that's enough for Roger Easter to make sure of a place in that final. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, they finish in second place. So we watch to see what will happen to uh, their point scoring. Have they done enough? It may depend on what other crews do coming out in these last rides. 51, that's Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Third place, number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Fourth place, number three, Colin Hutton. Fifth place, number 32. Sixth place, 773. The winning time is 128.40. The speed, 52.74. So it's 51, 7, 5, 3, 32, 7, 7, 3, 52.74 and 128.40 over the time. Well, we move on to race 40. There's a change, of course, in this one. There's no um, outfit 18, Dave Heath and Nigel Cross. Their place being taken by number 25. That's Rob Wilson Jr. and Vaughan Roberts. Well, as we look at the point scoring... Ivor Matthews, of course, had that disappointment of not riding first time out. I believe it was a second place that he picked up last time, so he really does need uh, a lot of big points on this one, but uh, I'm sure he knows it's a bit of an impossible task, but as we look to another crew that's out there, that's crew number two. It's Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. They indeed go into the lead as they go into that first bend, and they're driving hard. They come out a nice line out of that bottom bend. Ivor Matthews and... Peter Jones get up in the second and there's a fight for that third place but it's Neville Penfold, he's under pressure from Ivor Matthews. Neville Penfold on 10 points at the moment, knows he needs to score well in this one to get a place in that big final. Ivor Matthews goes wide again so it's going to be a hard fight for him. Jerry Adams it is this won this battle for third place so far. Steve Heath up there in the fifth at the moment. 
But as we look to the far side, we're watching to see Neville Penfield and Paul Randall start to turn the power on. So I'd be interested to talk to these guys afterwards because I'm wondering if one or two of them that didn't perform too well earlier on this afternoon had chosen the wrong gearing. They may have chosen the wrong tyres. It takes the afternoon to get used to it. And of course, if you've missed out on a field as big as this, with only three qualifying legs, it can be very, very difficult indeed. Those early choices of gearing and tyres, etc., are so important to them. And I'm sure that we're going to see a very hard all competition when we come down here later in the year because the riders, of course, will then have the experience of it really a, a couple of times. Now we'll and Paul Randall take a win, though. That's seven points and very valuable seven points to them. Ivor Matthews and uh, Peter Jones finish in second. Jerry Adams finishes in third. And I'm wondering with this amount of high scoring whether Ivor Matthews has been able to score enough points. 40. And we're still with that third leg of the sidecars. A very important win for the crew of Neville Benfold and Paul Randall. It's number two that go in first place. In second place, number 15. That, of course, is Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Third place, number 55, Jerry Adams and Adam Kalpersmith. In fourth place, number 91, Steve Heath and Steve Wright. In fifth place, number 25. No other finishers. The winning time, 128.86. 52.17 the time. 52.17, 128.86, it's 2.15, 55, 191 and 25. <laughs> Well, if I could ask if Chris Stewart can hear me. Chris Stewart, if you are available, you, could you make your way to Keith Potts' van before the interval? That's Chris Stewart. If you could now make your way to Keith Potts' van. And for all of you who are wondering what's going on, I'll explain all that in a very few moments. with race 41 as we look to see how important it is for people in this one to score. Mike Baxter is right up in the score and that looks like there's problems for Richard Jenner in that first bend. Oh, Richard Jenner indeed putting his arm up but it is the New Zealanders. Peter Adams and his passenger of course uh, John Gray, they of course have uh, been fighting all afternoon I think with conditions for anything to try and get used to this circuit but he certainly looks to see if he got the hang of it now because Mike Baxter is struggling to get past him or is he? Mike Baxter rides a very very tight line of course Mike Baxter he's rode a brilliant top corner all afternoon he really has been good on the bends but you watch Peter Adams go down this straight Mike Baxter, is he equal to him? he certainly is as they go down that back straight well, Mike Baxter has done exceptionally well this afternoon. He's been on 12 points going into this last ride. So a good ride here. Will it be sure of a place in the final? Peter Adams and John Gray still there in second. It's Rick Colvin and Nick Colvin that are holding third place at the moment. And quite a scrap going on in the back of the field as Richard Jenner now gets machinery going again. But as we watch to see the checkered flag come out, that's going to be his second of the afternoon for Mike Baxter. He's ridden exceptionally well this afternoon, Mike Baxter and Steve Bassett. Peter Adams and John Gray finish in second place. And number 112, Rick Colvin and Nicola Colvin finish in third. Four, outfit number 88, that's Mike Baxter and Steve Bassett. In second place, number six, Peter Adams and John Gray. Third place, number 112, that's Rick Colvin and Nicola Colvin. Fourth place, number 123, Dave Penfold and Justin Peach. Fifth place, number 87, sixth place, 101, the speed, 48.88, the winning time, 134.58. 134.58, 48.88 the speed, a result of 88, 6, 112, 123, 87 and 101. Well, as I look down the top of the point scoring chart going into this third leg, we've seen most of the riders, but what we haven't seen is the leader 
leaders in the point scoring overall. That's John Horsley and Rob Wilson. They indeed both lead the point scoring chart. They're both unbeaten so far. They come together in this last ride and this John Horsley looks to have had the better of it so far. Rob Wilson in second at the moment. Remind you quickly that both these two have been unbeaten so far this afternoon coming into this third leg. They both won their first rides and their second rides. It's going to be close. Rob Wilson has told me before he loves this circuit. He said it suits him down to the ground the way this circuit's laid out. John Halsey looks to be going very quickly this season. Looks to be in very determined form and of course a very experienced driver. So a great scrapping prospect. They've already got very, very close. Rob Wilson certainly looks better on this pits corner. He's gone the long way around and gone all the way around the outside. A brilliant corner from Rob Wilson. He's got to the front. John Halsey, though, not out of contention, still very close to him, but it really was a brilliant pits corner from Rob Wilson and Andy Orchard, of course, who steps in for Vince Jones this afternoon. John Halsey, tight up there in second place. We are, of course, going to see John in the final if he stays in that second place because he scored maximum points up to this ride. Oh, you can see that how well Robbie Wilson has ridden this circuit. He starts to pull away from John Halsey now as he goes into that top bend. For the third time, it means that we only have one sidecar crew unbeaten going into the final. That it is, is Robbie Wilson and uh, Andrew Orchard. Oh, a good ride down from John Halsey and Tony Miles, but they finish in second place. And Rob Heath, a good ride from him in third place. John Dormer has equally decided to go on that inside grid right next to Lee Street. So obviously the 250 riders favouring the inside gates on this track. Phil Ranson, the last to come in line, he indeed goes right on the inside of John Dormer. Started not happy with one or two riders pushing the tapes. They've moved back, up go the tapes, and we're into our first final. It's the 250 machines, and they're on and truly underway. John Dormer is away. So it's John Dormer that stormed into that first corner as the rest of the riders together go into that first bend behind him. So a tremendous start from John Dormer. He's stormed away that first turn. Four or five lengths as he goes down that back straight. Oh, well, that really was an incredible start from John Dormer. Well, it looks as if what the choice of inside gates then obviously was the right choice to make. Lee Street is up there on the inside of Darren Bishop in second place. There's Lee Street on the inside, Darren Bishop on the outside in the blue leathers. Well, we've seen him ride strongly this afternoon. We've also seen him ride a very conservative ride in his last ride. He was quite happy to hang on to second place. Well, he was obviously saving it all for the final. He anxiously looks down at his machine. I don't know whether John Dormer does that just to worry me, or is that bike slowing up? It does look as if John Dormer's got some sort of problem. So John Dormer puts his hand in the air on the bottom there, and that's really the afternoon, but it means now we've got to turn our attention to the riders that take over the lead from him. Leading at the moment is Darren Bishop, but he goes sideways as Lee Street comes close to him. But Darren Bishop still there with Lee Street just on his back wheel. It's going to be close to the line as they go into their last lap, and you can see that Darren Bishop looks like he's done enough to go down that back row, but Lee Street is right there on his back wheel. He's driving hard, he's going quickly on this last bend. Oh, indeed, Lee Street's got problems as well on that top bend. So Darren Bishop gets an easy run into the checkered flag, comes right to the boards, but he takes it from John Pilcher in second, from Dave Mears in third. Well, they need our 250 final full of machinery problems. John Dilmer, very, very unfortunate there, leading in very convincing style. It looked like he saved it all for the final, and then his machinery let him down. And Lee Street, the unbeaten rider that came into the final, also going out, and it looked like he was going to make a challenge for that first place. So what a tremendous way and disappointing way to start the lineup of these big finals. It looked like being John Dormer's from start to finish. It then looked as if Lee Street might have an attempt on the last bend. But in the end, it was a result for Darren Bishop. Number 89 goes in first place. In second place, number 49. That, of course, is John Pilcher. In third place, number 139, Dave Mears. In fourth place, our reserve rider that came in, number 124, Keith Strudwick. In fifth place, number 300, Terry Giles. In sixth place, number six, Phil Ranson. Seventh place, number 741, that's Matthew Street. Eighth place, number 18, 
ninth place, number 62. The winning time, 146.86. Speed, 48.09. So we move on to race 44, the 1000cc left-hand sidecar final. The lineup includes number two, Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw. 808, Luke Packle and Julian Browning. 251 is John Arnott. Number 24 is Tom Penfold. 217 is Phil Davis. And a 68 is Chris Berwick as they get underway. And it is indeed... Tom Penfold has made the best into that first bend, number 24. Tom Penfold and Jason Glennie, but as I say there, you can see... It is that Lee's going down that back straight as Bill Penfold now drives you on the inside of Tom Penfold. So Bill Penfold on the inside. We've seen him hold some brilliant tight lines earlier on this afternoon. He's now got Luke Patchell to catch. Luke Patchell, of course, had that disastrous first ride. He never scored any points whatsoever in his first ride. He scored enough points in his second two rides to get him into this final. And he's now showing that he could have been there and indeed had problems with Tom Penfold. So Tom Penfold pulls out on that top corner. He'll be quickly trying to get the outfit off as he gets very, very close at the front. Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw again hold a very tight line. Luke Patchell knows he's there now. He's seen him there. He knows that he's got to drive hard into that last bend as Bill Penfold goes wide on the entrance of that top bend. He'll be driving hard to get in tight on the entrance. Luke Patchell's quick on that top part of the circuit. This is where Bill Penfold is quick though. He's done right the way around the outside. A tremendous ride from Bill Penfold. He'll now try and shut the door as he comes on the exit of this bend. A brilliant final from Bill Penfold. He goes into his last lap. Leading now from Luke Patchell and Julian Browning. Well, my apologies, of course, it's John Arnott that's in third place. But the action really has been right at the front. In a final of this class. We've got Bill Penfold. Into the last bend. Luke Patchell and Julian Brown and the early leaders lose out to Bill Penfold, but what a convincing win from him. As he comes to the line, a great ride from Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw. Luke Patchell and Julian Browning get second. Winning the battle for this third place is Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis. Followed home by John Arnott and Russell Steele. Well, we've seen two tremendous finals now, 250 and 500. Well, that was a CC left-hand side cars. We've got more to come. The race 44 then, a tremendous final it turned out to be. The eventual winners, and very deservedly so, outfit number two, Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw. In second place, 808, Luke Patchell and Julian Browning. In third place, number 68, Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis. Fourth place, number 251, John Arnott and Russell Steele. No other finishes, unfortunately, but the winning time won 52.24. 46.03 the speed. So we move on. They're going to keep me busy, I can see, this afternoon. We're already into the 350 final. This is one I've been looking forward to all afternoon. This is the 350 final, a lineup that includes number 158, Wayne Broadhurst, number 14, Martin Jacobs, number 167, Mark Seabright, number 175, Keith Potts, number 139, Dave Mears, number 41, David Steen, number 75, Steve Carter, number 121, Alan Harmer. There's four other riders that have joined them as well, but I haven't got the time to go through them as we get underway with the 350 final. It promises to be an absolute cracking 350 final. As we look to that first bend, that does look to me as if... this afternoon but right up there with him as well is David Steen in third place and Steeny trying desperately hard to hang on to it in third place Keith Botso leads as he comes past us Wayne Broadhurst is up there in second Martin Jacobs has now moved through in the fourth place with Mark Seabright breathing down his exhaust pipe as they go into that top bend doesn't give an inch, he throws it into that pit bend, tries to get closer as he comes out on the exit of that pit bend. David Steen has not lost contention either, he's still there in third. Martin Jacobs still holding fourth. Well, I said you had some of the best 350s in the country here this afternoon. <laughs> well as indeed I'm sure there's a lot of the crowd here expect him to do and there's problems with David Steen David Steen has pulled up on that bottom corner it means therefore that Martin Jacobs moves up into third 
That means a gap is open up to get some of the comes off that pit bend and goes to the line and takes it. Keith Potts gets it. Wayne Broadhurst in second. Marty Jacobs in third. Mark Seabright in fourth and Dave Mears in fifth. Well, it was certainly one I was looking forward to and uh, I don't mind repeating again. I think that's equal to an entry that we've seen in some national finals over the years. Tremendous lineup of very talented 350 riders. So then the result of race 45, it was the 350 solo final and it was a very good win from start to finish for number 175, Keith Potts. In second place, number 158, that was Wayne Broadhurst and didn't he try all the way home. In third place, number 14, Martin Jacobs. In fourth place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In fifth place, number 139, Dave Mears. Sixth place, number 121, Alan Harmer. Seventh place, number nine, Mitchell Gordon. Eighth place, number 26, Martin Giles. Ninth place, 260, Mark Harrison. Tenth place, 261, Andy Gom. The winning time, 140.09. The time, 50, speed, I should say, 51.32. 51.32, 140.09, the time. We move in to race 46. It is the 500cc sidecar competition. And going in this one is outfit number 30. Unbeaten so far this afternoon, Mel and Lester Goodwin. Also going on the line is number 91, Wayne Boys and Simon King. Joining them also, number 20, that's Alan and Lynn Peck. Number seven is Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse. Number 14, Simon Baird and R. Sanford and number 21 Norman Haynes and Neil Pocknell so I think only one question to be answered here now in the 500cc competition for sidecars can Mel and Lester Goodwin finish the whole day being unbeaten well it does look as if they've not made the best of starts because it's Alan Peck and Kevin Laird that have got the start going into that first bend well, Mel and Lester Boodgoon have been forced to go very, very wide. They tuck in on the inside and come through. And now they go after Kevin there. Oh, that was a tremendous corner from Mel Goodwin. They certainly hadn't made the start at all when they come past me. But as they went into that first bend, they were forced to go wide. They drove back in hard. And now they're driving hard once again to get the nose just in front of Kevin Laird. Tremendous crap going on for third place at the moment, but my eyes are still on that first place. Mel and Lester Goodwin though, let's not take it away from them because they lead the field, they've done that all afternoon, they didn't have the easiest of starts at all but they fought their way through, tremendous skillful riding from them on that first bend, Kevin Laird has got up in a second, Wayne Boys is up in a third, Alan Peck is up in fourth place but I wouldn't have said those traditions would say the same as the race goes on. Very close for second place between Kevin Laird and Wayne Boys. Those two outfits together as they go into that pit bend. Wayne Boys on the inside in the green leathers. He's the easiest one to spot as he indeed drives hard, holds a much tighter line. Alan and Impact watching the action that's going on in front of them. Hang on to that fourth place at the moment so they can see the second third. So Wayne Boys now comfortably looks to have got into second. Mel and Lester Goodwin then into their last bend as they exit from that top bend. They do stay unbeaten all afternoon. Mel and Lester Goodwin take the checker flag. Wayne Boys finishes in second. Kevin Laird finishes in third. Alan and Limpack in fourth place. But what a great ride from Mel and Lester Goodwin. The winning time 147.03, the speed 48.09. 30, 91, 7, 20, 14 and 21, 147.03 the time. We move on to race 47, the sidecar right-handed 1000cc B final. Instead, time permitting, well there was time permitting, a lineup that includes number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Number 32, Kevin Simmons and Mark Langmaid. Number 12, Tim Bennett and Pete Bassett. 
Number 55, Jerry Adams and Alan Cooper Smith. Number 15, Ivy Matthews, Peter Jones, and number six, we're underway already, and as Peter Adams, I was just about to mention, comes off the line with his front wheel in the air. It is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards that go to the front. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards pursued by Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones in that first bend. Tim Bennett leaves the field after them, but Peter Adams has now come through to take over that responsibility. Peter Adams dives into third place going into this pit bend, but Ken Lane and Mark Edwards seem to have got away from Ivor Matthews, who's got problems on that pit bend. Or has he? He looked to have problems. Peter Jones put his hand in the air, but the motor come back on song, and they be lying down that back straight just to keep a nose in front of the New Zealand crew, uh, Peter Adams and John Gray. Well, we watch anxiously, as I'm sure there's a lot of people who wouldn't have been expecting to see our British Masters champions, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, in the B-Final, but of course that's the cruel, cruel thing of three legs only, because it's very hard when you've got a big field like we've had here this afternoon, you miss one ride, and indeed it's a struggle then to get into the final, because there's a lot of riders going to score persistently on second and third places, and that's indeed exactly what's happened this afternoon. Oh, Peter Adams still driving hard in third place, but Ivor Matthews and Mike Dell, the reason there, well, I knew I'd have to say it one time this afternoon, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones, of course. Well, problems for Peter Adams as he dropped right back down the field, the rest of the field come by him, there's a good scrap going on for fifth or sixth, but it is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards that take the V final. Ivor Matthews and Mike Dowers take second, Tim Bennett crosses the line in third, Kevin Simmons in fourth, 47, the Sidecar B final. A win for number seven. That's Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In third place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Pete Bassett. In fourth place, number 32, Kevin Simmons and Mark Langmaid. In fifth place, number 55, Jerry Adams, Adam Kelper Smith. And sixth place, number six, Peter Adams and John Gray. The winning time, 130.98. If you've been putting the speeds down, that works out to be 51.06 average miles per hour as we go over the page. And already the riders come to the line for the Solo A final. It consists of number four, Trevor Banks, number 29, Paul Mitchell, number 04, Ricky Stanford, Richard Jenner, Neville Tatum, Mark C, Ryan Chris Tritton. There is no Paul Hurry, I'm sorry to tell you, because Paul Hurry, out of that tumble on the top corner, is getting double vision. He said he didn't want to risk it, so he's let somebody else go in his place. But we've still got a cracking lineup of riders going in this A final as we look to that first corner. Is that Trevor Banks? Trevor Banks then, chasing after the leader at the moment. Robbie Fuller, I can see, moving through into third place. He's looking after the rest of the field at the moment, but it's tight to the front, as it is indeed Neville Tatum and Trevor Banks that have the fight at the front of the field. Robbie Fuller, Mark Seabright, Alan Farmer, Chris Tritton is how they go down the rest of the field. So when we look at the front... Trevor Banks, I'm sure you can spot him easy enough. Where do you expect to see him? Of course he is, right at the front of the field. He really is having a cracking start to his season, Trevor Banks. And I'm sure there's a lot of people here that have seen Trevor race so many years, and indeed, he looks to be in great form. He goes down that bank straight, he's really open. He's not one to give up at all. He drives hard into that pit bend, but he must wonder what sort of power Trevor Banks is on at the moment. Into the last lap we go, Robbie Fuller still hangs on in third place. Mark C. Ride in fourth, Chris Tritton in fifth. Banks goes incredibly wide, gets right to the boards and takes the chequered flag in style. He knew he couldn't give up at all. Neville Tatum was in second. Robbie Fuller finishes in third. Mark Seabright in fourth. Chris Tritton in fifth. Duncan Tolhurst in sixth. And right to that seventh and eighth place. They were still racing very, very hard. A great result for Trevor Banks. Yet another in this season. 49, it's the 1000cc right-hand sidecar A final, the final of event six. Robbie Wilson, the only crew that is unbeaten so far this afternoon. We've seen Mel Lester Goodwin do that in the 500 chairs. 
and of course Bill Penfold do it in the left hand chair so what can happen in the right hand sidecar A final they're joined on the line and would you believe qualifying on equal points number 51 Roger Misa Mike Baxter 88 and John Halsey 13 also coming to the line number 2 Neville Penfold and number 5 Mike Cave so as we think back over the afternoon's racing, John Halsey and uh, Tony Miles have been making some excellent starts. Interesting to watch where they go on the start line because obviously Rob Wilson would have had first choice. Oh, a very interesting choice of gate. It looks as if Robbie Wilson has actually taken a middle gate. Neville Penfold is right out on the far side, whereas John Halsey and Roger Meester would have had second choice to the gate, and they've both chosen to go right on the inside. So, uh, obviously no real advantage has been seen by the sidecars on uh, gate positions. But as they indeed come to the line now, the gate goes up and we see a quick break from the outside of the gate, but from the middle of the gate, Rob Wilson has gone well, Roger Misa has gone well from the inside, and following Roger Misa goes John Halsey into that first bend, Rob Wilson is forced wide because of that, and indeed as they come round that first bend, there's all sorts of problems on that first bend, but Roger Misa leads as he goes into that pit bend, he made the best of that first call. <laughs> going in the A final, for what reason I do not understand, I was expecting obviously not to see one outfit that of Neville and Paul Randall but I don't quite understand why we've not got five outfits I'm sure all will be revealed to me sooner or later, in the meantime we can only ask to uh, be all to bear with us while the track is indeed cleared well, we hope it hasn't detracted at all from the enjoyment of the afternoon's racing because we've still got four very competent sidecar crews on the line. Why four, not five, I don't know, but we have only got four, and those four are underway. It's Roger Misa that leads going down that back straight. Roger Misa and Shane Lapham, as indeed they were in that position before the race was stopped, get right to the front once again. They go into that top end, leading from John Halsey and Tony Miles in second place, and that's indeed... Another good start from John Halsey, but it's Roger Misa they got to catch who we've seen getting quicker all afternoon, but Rob Wilson has now got the hard work to do because Robbie Wilson missed the start. He's been good on this circuit before, he's now got three very quick outfits in front of him. So asking a lot of Rob Wilson and Andy Orchard. But I say we're asking a lot, already he's caught up with Mick Cave and Mick Stace and gets himself into third. So that's where the action is, back for that second place now because John Halsey looks like being caught by Rob Wilson. And Rob Wilson indeed catching right up with uh, John Halsey. And as Roger Meester comes past me, it's still leading. I can see that because we've got Mick Cave's outfit on the 